Hi, this is Nicole Lee with Health, Beauty, and More. And today I'd like to talk a little bit about allergies and what you can do that's natural to help alleviate some of the symptoms of allergies. And I'm doing this during a time when the pollen is pretty high in a lot of areas. This is that season. So if you're one of the allergy sufferers, then maybe this information will help you, at least help you to feel better. This is not known as a cure, any of these things, and I would always, you know, check with my doctor because they need to know what herbs you're on and just as far as medication, contraindications and all that. And even though they may help the majority of people, there are some people that have allergies to herbs. So I just wanted to preface that so that you know before you just jump into something. Um, to start off with, I'll talk about the first one briefly, and it's called stinging nettles. Don't let the word stinging um, upset you or any, in any way because it doesn't sting. I don't know where that came from, but um, what happens is the carotene and the vitamin K and quercetin is what also, which is within the stinging nettle, is responsible for inhibiting anti the inflammation, the, the histamines, which are the ones that cause the problems and cause the reactions of allergy. Allergies in general are usually to some, some protein. Um, you can be tested by an allergist to find out what that is, and if you want to go to that expense and trouble, you can do that, and they may give you, they'll probably give you a prescription medication. But if you want to try natural, that might be one to look at. And do your research on each of these and find out what was best suits your uh, budget and your, um, your lifestyle. Now, stinging nettle also can come in a tea form, so if you wanted something in a tea form, that is one that does come in the form of drinking tea. Another one that we've all heard of is licorice. When I, when I say licorice, I mean real licorice, black licorice, not the red vines that people think of as licorice. Uh, licorice in, in itself has been shown to be uh, anti-tumor properties it has, so that's good if someone has uh, tendencies or has tumors. Supposedly, the licorice might help uh, keep the person from getting them, more of them. It also has uh, an antimicrobial effect. So I believe, if I'm not incorrect on this, that means uh, sort of like an antifungal effect. Uh, Anti-inflammatory, it, it also enhances um, something that we have in our bodies called cortisol. And it ha it, what it does is it helps level those out in our bodies. Um, a real common item that we can cook with that is also very good for people with allergies is raw garlic. And that is known to have an agent called quercetin with a Q, Q-U-E-R-C-I-T-I-N. Now, check with your doctor on quercetin if you're concerned about it uh, being a contraindication with certain medications because it has shown that it can do that. But as far as garlic raw, it also has anti-inflammatory effects, and that's part of the what happens when the allergic reaction occurs. We get inflammation because the histamines produce the inflammation and we can end up with uh, nasal problems like watery nose, rhinitis, watery eyes, itching. We could end up with hives, whatever it is that our body is doing. It's trying to tell you that it doesn't like that uh, protein. So that's that's something to think about. And then um, an item called bromelain, which is actually derived from the um, stems of pineapples. Bromelain actually, rather than looking at, at it as an herb, I would say it's more like a plant-based natural enzyme. It also is great for allergy 
like nasal swelling is great for helping with the mucus and uh, it makes it so much easier to breathe so the airways are open and pass through more easily and then the next item I want to say of something about is called Butterbur, B-U-T-T-E-R-B-U-R, -T -T -E and it contains something called leukotriene. Leukotriene uh, inhibitor is what it has in there, which also aids in airflow through the passageways of our body. And here's one that people have heard about called ginkgo biloba. It, it has been pretty well known to affect the cardiovascular system in our body, but also has positive effects for people with allergies. Uh, asthma is, an, is one of the conditions that uh, ginkgo biloba has been shown to help uh, reduce the inflammation that creates that problem with breathing. It's packed with seven antihistamines, so it's a pretty potent item that ginkgo biloba is. Helps so, uh, our, us to eliminate free radicals. Those are not the good things. You don't want those in your body. Um, free radicals, if it helps to eliminate free radicals, that is a healthy sign. And it also allows more oxygen entry into the, your lungs. And there's one more I want to add to the list and it's called reishi mushrooms. Reishi spelled R-E-I-S-H-I. It supposedly has a lot of health benefits and it's been used for thousands of years. It's an ancient mushroom that's been used uh, from, by the Japanese and Chinese cultures and they still use them today. What they contain is an is something called lanostan compounds and that has a natural antihistamine and supposed to inhibit histamine release in your body. So these are just a few things to think about. Um, I like the tea, the, I, the idea of drinking the tea and that like the stinging nettle and you can look up whatever you like if you like licorice you might want to look at that if you're a garlic person you might want to look at that if you prefer um, going with bromelain which is part of the plant called pineapple the fruit you can look at that and these other ones that I mentioned um, you, some of them are great with using in your cooking like the reishi mushroom so take a look at all that and see what you think and um, I hope this helps your allergies and that you pass this information on and subscribe and comment thank you so much for joining me and have a great day this is Nicole Lee with Health Beauty oh incredible that you would you would just never have believed how many how many things they're good for and it's a healthy thing to make it a daily practice to add some lemon juice to your water warm water is a great way to do this preferably first thing in the morning I like a little honey added in there or some sweetener and some warm water and just drink it as a daily daily um, aid and you're going to find that it's got a lot of cleansing properties uh, there's so many things like that it can do it can treat things like throat infections indigestion constipation even dental problems like if you have a toothache uh, you could actually put a little rub a little bit of lemon juice right there on the toothache and this helps reduce the pain and it can also help reduce fevers because what it does is it increases the body's perspiration and that breaks the fever. It's also been known to help internal bleeding, but I would ask my doctor first on that if you, if you have something that serious. Um, they've done studies that have shown that it has helped different types of arthritis. Uh, it's, it's been used to help burns. 
Uh, it's also been helpful for people that want to lose weight and uh, lots of different respiratory problems. Uh, lemons have shown to be helpful and cholera has been helpful for that. It's also helped with increased people with increased blood pressure. It's good, gives the hair a little shine if you add it to the shampoo and the skin as well can will have more of a glow to it it can also take out stains like in your teeth so and also if you think about your immune system lemons are very good for helping boost that it's it's a blood purifier and you can treat uh, kidney stones with lemons you can use it for all kinds of things like preventing diabetes, constipation, indigestion, and protecting the arthritis. Not just uh, not just if you if you don't even if you don't have arthritis, it can maybe help prevent some of that from coming on too soon. Uh, what lemon is is it's basically a fruit. And it contains a lot of vitamin C, vitamins B6, A, E, folate, niacin, thiamine, riboflavin, panathenic acid, copper, calcium, iron, magnesium, potassium, zinc, and phosphorus, and uh, protein. It contains an item called flavonoids, which contain antioxidants, which is a good thing these days for fighting off things like cancer and other illnesses. Um, it's also been used to help reduce hair loss by adding to the shampoo. And also when you get sunburns or any kind of burn, it's supposed to help with reducing the intensity of the, the pain and also with the scarring from the burns. It's supposed to help with healing. See, it's basically an antiseptic and coagulant. So if, you, if a person does have internal bleeding, um, there again, um, I would consult a visit physician on that one. But for something simple like a nosebleed, it might help if you just dip it in um, with a cotton ball, dip it into the lemon juice and put it right there on the nosebleed. Um, so the things that I've talked about are amazing, I think, about lemons and how it can detoxify the system and how uh, one more thing that I might add that is good for uh, foot problems. It, if your feet need to be relaxed, you've been on them all day, working or just just busy walking a lot if you just take a basin of warm water and you put some lemon juice in there uh, it'll actually soothe your feet calm them down and re rejuvenate them so if that isn't good news I don't know what is I hope this helped you and this is Nicole Lee with health beauty and more be sure to subscribe and share and comment thank you so much for listening bye bye Hi, this is Nicole Lee with Health, Beauty, and More with some tips and some facts for you um, regarding health and how to take care of ourselves with natural ways like herbs and how we eat. Um, I found this list of different herbs and some of the attributes they have and as far as illnesses go, if you are um, interested, I'm going to go through it anyway. Um, but if you don't want to hear about this part, then that's, I understand. But when we have different issues that go, come from A to Z, you know, during our lifetime, we can 
depend on some of these herbal products that are natural and you can find them at most health food stores and even some of your pharmacies carry this. Uh, the first one in the A group, I'll go through that first and that's acne. They have um, tea tree oil or calendula or aloe for a remedy, a natural remedy. Also uh, for in the A's, alcoholism. They listed prim, evening primrose, which I believe also helps with relaxation. And something called kudzu, kudzu, which is like a fungus that grows on trees in the south, in the southern area states of the United States. I've seen it, especially in Georgia. Um, for allergies, they have chamomile. Uh, for anyone with Alzheimer's, disease, they list rosemary and ginkgo, ginkgo or ginkgo biloba. Um, chest pain is also called angina. Um, they list hawthorn, garlic, willow, and green tea. Green tea has been known to help with a lot of cures and uh, a lot of, it's, it, it's a remedy for a lot of things, but I'll, I do know this, that it does have caffeine in it. And if I find it without caffeine, I'll probably buy some. For anxiety and stress, they listed hops, kava, passion flower, valerian, chamomile, and lavender. For arteriosclerosis, they list garlic. For arthritis, they list capsicum, ginger, turmeric, willow, cat's claw, and devil's claw. For the condition of asthma, they list coffee, ephedra, or tea. They also list um, top, the topical tea tree oil to use that for athlete's foot. But I've also heard about using Vicks Vaporobe for athlete's foot. Uh, it supposedly helps if you do it daily and it doesn't take long before you see a significant difference. For um, attention deficit order, they listed evening primrose oil. For bad breath, they listed parsley. Um, also, chlorophyll is a good one, too, but the chlor chlorophyll can cause heartburn, so I would take it with, in stride and, and maybe dilute it with something like baking soda or some fruit juice. Uh, for boils, they list tea tree oil, topical garlic, echinacea, another one that's a very long word, eleutherococcus, ginseng, and rhodiola. For bronchitis, they list echinacea and Pelargonium. For burns, aloe, or another word, aloe vera, from the aloe vera tree plant. And for cancer, they have quite a few items in here. They have bilberry, blackberry, cocoa, dark chocolate. Mm. That's, that's, that means I better eat some of that. Mm. Nature Valley, nut crisp, and a dark chocolate, almond dark chocolate. It's so delicious, and I know if I go grab that, I must be hungry. Okay, after that one, for cancer, they also list the green tea, the garlic, the ginseng, something called maitake mushroom, maitake mushroom, which I don't think I've seen that in the grocery store, but it exists. They list pomegranate, raspberry, and the reishi mushrooms. They, they said for canker sores to use golden seal, for colds, echinacea, andrography, ginseng, coffee, licorice roots, for, also good for a sore throat, for, um, or you can use tea, uh, nasal and chest congestion, it helps out. For congestive heart failure, they list hawthorn. For constipation, they list apples, psyllium seed, and senna. But I know that milk of magnesia is very good. Anything with magnesium in it is good for constipation. For coughing, they use they list a eucalyptus. But eucalyptus oil is, opens up the passageways, and it's just it's like that wasabi green. Um, you know, what wasabi is that stuff that you get with sushi rolls. That it doesn't burn light as much. It just opens everything up so that you can breathe and. Uh, Feel clear, you know, it clears the passageways, all right. 
for depression, I have down here St. John's wort. Um, uh, but they didn't add Sam E, but I know that's natural. For diabetes type 2, they list garlic, uh, navy, pinto, or black beans, cinnamon, and eleutherococcus, flaxseed, and green tea. For, for diabetic ulcers, they list comfrey. For diarrhea, they list bilberry and raspberry. For diverticulitis, they list peppermint. I noticed peppermint is also great for restless leg syndrome. If you've ever had that or know someone with it, have them rub their feet and legs with the peppermint essential oil and see if that works. For dizziness, I have down here ginger and ginkgo. For earaches, I have echinacea. For eczema, chamomile, topical barrage seed oil, and evening primrose oil. For fatigue, I have down dark chocolate. Oh, see, there's another reason to eat this stuff if you're tired. Uh, coffee, eleutherococcus, ginseng, rhodiola, and tea. For flu, echinacea, elderberry syrup. Uh, for gas, they list dill and fennel. For giardia, which is a stomach problem. Um, I think it's a parasite of some sort. They list golden seal for gingivitis, which is gum disease. They list green tea and golden seal. For hay fever, they list butterbur and stinging nettle. For herpes, they list lemon balm, uh, comfrey, echinacea, garlic, and ginseng. For high blood pressure, they list garlic, beans, dark chocolate, again, there we go, cocoa, <laughs> and hawthorn. For high high blood sugar, fenugreek, fenugreek, that's how you pronounce that, I believe. For high cholesterol, they list apples, cinnamon, cinnamon is good on apples, cocoa, dark chocolate, there we go again, high cholesterol, evening primrose oil, I must eat more chocolate, dark chocolate, flaxseed, soy foods, and green tea. For hot flashes, red clover, soy, black cohosh. For impotence, Talked about men, I believe. Yohimbe, which is made from the yam, I believe. For indigestion, we have chamomile, ginger, and peppermint. For infections, we have topical tea tree oil, astragalus, uh, or I'm not sure if it's pronounced astragalus, echinacea, eleutherococcus, garlic, and ginseng, and rhodiola. And then the list goes on for insomnia, kava, primrose, evening primrose, hops, lemon balm, valerian, irregular heartbeat, we have hawthorn listed. Um, I believe if you rub your chest with uh, Vicks Vapor Rub, that helps with irregular heartbeat too. Maybe it's the, men the camphor or the menthol Lyptus, eucalyptus aspect of it, but it does seem to help. For irregularity, they have senna and psyllium seeds. For irritable, irritable bowel syndrome, chamomile peppermint, lower back pain, thymol, carvacrol, and white willow bark for menstrual cramps. We have kava, raspberry, chaseberry. For migraines, we have feverfew and butterbur. For more motion, morning sickness, ginger. For muscle pain, they have capsicum and winter green. I tried capsicum years ago. I don't know how people can um, stand the, the, the pain of that is worse than the, the muscle pain itself. Uh, nausea, they said ginger. Premenstrual syndrome, they said chaste berry and evening primrose. Ringing in the ears, they list ginkgo. And seasonal affective disorder, they list St. John's wort. For shingles, they list capsicum. For sore throat, licorice, marshmallow, or moline. For a stuffed nose, echinacea. For a tonsillitis, golden seal, astragalus, and echinacea. For a toothache, they list willow and clove oil. For ulcers, they list aloe and licorice. And for varicose veins, they list bilberry, horse, and chestnut. Um, they didn't put one down here for people that lose their hair, alopecia. Horsetail, that's what I would say, would be the, the one I would go for. For yeast infections, they list eat garlic, uh, take golden seal, and something called po podarco. And then 
I can give you that list if you if you want it, it, it for your own use, but uh, that's a long one. But I'd be glad to send anybody that list if that's something you want. Fruits and vegetables that contain uh, essential vitamins, minerals, and fiber, they can help protect you from chronic disease. Because people that don't eat a lot of fruits and vegetables have a lot more problems and risk uh, a higher risk of chronic illnesses like stroke and and other cardiovascular diseases and even cancer. So most of our nutrients should come from food. Um, the foods that contain, like the fruits and vegetables I was talking about, they contain all the vitamins, minerals, and supplements that are natural and they're naturally occurring and it protect you from so many different things, so many different diseases. And uh, if you look at the Japanese and their diet, they seem to have the longest lifespan in the world lowest incidence of obesity, heart disease, and diabetes. If you look at the Mediterranean diet, it's also extremely healthful, and it usually um, includes things that are homemade. Italian food is one example, um, like lentils and garbanzo beans to, and balsamic vinegar. Uh, not overeating, of course, is a good thing to remember because we tend to eat our, our largest meal at you're in America, we end up eating too much in late in the day, our last meal. And I think it's the other way around for these countries that have a higher, uh, a lower risk of illness and a higher uh, uh, lifespan, healthier quality life. They eat their largest meal of the day as lunch in Italy, um, not dinner. They also have a big feast on Sundays and they take walks once in a while with their families. And one cardiologist really recommends that his clients go eat a uh, Mediterranean diet. His name's Richard Collins. He said their, their diet is so rich in vegetables and fruits and whole grains and lean meats and poultry and a lot of omega-3. That's something that naturally occurs in fish, rich fish. A recent study in China found that women that eat mushrooms three times a week they have a 50% reduction in the incidence of breast cancer. They also drink a lot of green tea in China three times a week, and that lowers their risk of developing breast cancer as well. That's really stunning and uh, um, an enormous difference. Um, certain herbs, thyme, rosemary, oregano, basil, mint, and so on, the cancer rates are much lower when and, and the cancer is not as aggressive if people are utilizing these these um, spices. Here's a home remedy for fever blisters. You apply petroleum jelly to the skin or cold compresses on the affected area. And also avoid eating nuts and chocolate. Well, I know that's, chocolate isn't going to help you if you have a fever blister because I believe um, there is protein in there that antagonizes the, the virus that causes the cold sores and chocolate is, and nuts are no-nos for that. So um, if you're having a breakout and a, you don't, you, you don't, you kind of want to have to, that and caffeine and alcohol are probably no-nos for anyone that has um, canker sores. Home remedies for a common fever are drinking tea made from saffron, eating oranges. They give you also instant energy and vitamin C to help you fight off infections. Uh, also, a glass of milk can help. A home remedy for a sore throat. Let me give you that. It's a mixture of Listerine mouthwash with hydrogen peroxide. You pour a little of each into a cup, equal parts gargle. And eat three to four marshmallows to soothe the sore throat. And that's something children like because of all the sugar and corn syrup that they make them. This, the gelatin in the marshmallows is what soothes the sore throat. They say drink hot water, lemon juice, and honey mixed together. And I've heard that about honey, especially if it's locally grown uh, organic honey. That, that not only does it do that, but it assists uh, when you've got allergies. And if you're prone to having seasonal allergies, try the, the basic honey and you put on your breakfast toast or whatever you want to sweeten, sweeten it with. And um, a home remedy for heartburn here. 
take a teaspoon of baking soda in an eight ounce um, cup of water and drink that. It's a natural antacid. You can also use it to brush your teeth with and it makes them lighter. I like mine. Kind of white. Bananas act as a natural antacid in the body and you can eat either fresh or dried bananas. Fresh ginger, if you can swing eating it, it's just a little hard on the some people's digestive system. It's one of the oldest remedies for heartburn, but for me, I think it would give me heartburn. It can be added to food when it's cooked, eaten raw, or consumed as ginger tea. Okay, let me give you a couple of silly ones here. For, this is so funny. Another remedy for warts. Use duct tape to, renew, to remove your warts. If you're really strong enough to do that and like waxing to me. Um, cure your nail fungus with vapor rub. Soothe your eczema by using oatmeal. I've heard that's also something that you can use on insect bites like oatmeal. I've heard of oatmeal baths uh, for people that have um, problems with uh, hemorrhoids, you know, it, it soothes that area. Curing bad breath by eating yogurt. Well, yogurt has bat, um, lactobacillus, and those are the good bacteria that we need to replace uh, in our body that uh, maybe we don't have enough of those, and it maybe has something to do with the bad breath. And then lastly is eating olives. That supposedly helps with motion sickness. I'm not sure which, whether they're talking about green or black, but... Anyway, I hope these things helped you, and uh, I hope you got something out of it. And let me know if you want any of this information sent to you. I'll be more than happy. Have a great day. Do whatever your, your heart desires, and just enjoy life. Namaste. Nicole Lee with Health, Beauty, and More. I'm going to do another beauty segment here for those of you that have fine hair like mine and you want a little up do on top you want to do something rather than just ratting your hair well these little spongy things with a comb you stick right in your hair and they'll give you that extra volume that you want and I'm going to show you how I would do it I would just take the hair that I have from back here, the crown, and brushing it forward now and just leave it like that. No, no I'm just kidding. Um, brushing it forward, kind of grabbing the hair. Like that. And then take this little comb dealie and you want to stick it in the hair that you grabbed just before that part or near it. Try to center it as best you can. That might not be centered, but with the mirror it's easier to see what you're doing. Anyway, at this point you want to take the hair in your hands kind of spreading it out over that sponge and what I did with this hairspray was I sprayed some of the hairpins I used Kenra I like for fine hair I like to use light hold anyway anyway this is what I'm doing is I twisted my hair so that I can secure it with bobby pins kind of going towards the sponge with the bobby pins. I'll, all I have is one pin in there right now. And you can really play with your hair a lot 
and smooth it out if you have a mirror. But I suggest doing more than one pen and trying to make it look as natural as possible. So you might have to play with it a little bit with the mirror and lay it down and then pin around that. Or take some more hair from the sides if you have more than I do that would look better to pin around this area. So I'm going to put one more pin in without a mirror. So it'll look better if you do it with a mirror. But this just gives you an idea of how one would do this. And if you have more hair than I do, more power to you. If you really want to thicken it, you can use a thickener and hairspray. You can add a tease it a little bit to make your hair look like, like you have more hair. You do the same thing in the back. A little light hairspray to hold it. I have no idea what it looks like because I don't have a mirror right now. Oh, I have a little under here. That's right. Huh. It's not too bad. I think I'd fix this piece right here that's kind of laying funny. And tighten that back a little more. Make it look a little better that way. There. That might be better. And the same thing maybe with this piece right here. Because there is sometimes these pieces don't always run the way you want them to when you pin. And I'm going to try to maybe I'll do a little ratting on that piece too. And then just pin it. Okay, so at least from the front you can see I have a sort of a pompadour on top. I'm bending down to see what you think. I'll turn around. I don't I don't know how the back's gonna look because of the way I did it without looking the first time, but from the front it does look different. It's a different look. So what do you think? It's probably worth trying it on your hair. It might give you that boost of volume that you need. Hope you enjoyed the video with another beauty tip from Nicole Lee at Health Beauty and More. And be sure to subscribe. Talk to you soon. Have a great day. And without glasses, it probably looks better. But I don't have contact lenses right now, so... I'm just going to go with these. That way I can read everything, see everything clearly. Take care. Bye-bye. This is Nicole Lee with Health Beauty and More, and I want to talk a little bit about hair and split ends and toxic chemicals that are in ingredients in shampoos and conditioners. Um, a lot of people, I myself included, struggle with uh, split ends and I have, and I recently found out a lot of information that can help with preventing them and taking care and managing split ends that you have. You can tell you have split ends usually by pulling your hair up like this and looking closely and there'll be some of that, some hairs that just stick up. And that is an indication that it's already split that far up. So they can split anywhere in the shaft of the hair. Um, people think they're just at the ends, but 
they could be all the way up to the top and dry and brittle looking and you wonder why your hair doesn't look healthy. Um, we're so used to wanting our hair to look, you know, full and shiny and dry and uh, volumizing it and doing all this stuff with products, but we might not realize what, that we might even be damaging our hair more by washing too often and using chemicals that are toxic to our hair. Uh, some of those uh, chemicals in shampoo cause a sudsing effect, are actually harmful to your hair. And I just, uh, I kind of heard about that, but I didn't know what they were called or anything. But uh, they can do damage to your hair. So watch out for that and try to get something that is high quality, that is an emollient style type uh, uh, shampoo and a good good uh, quality conditioner and you don't have to spend a lot of money on the products because they have some that are less expensive as well. Um, so washing too often is not good and the old tale, you know, that the hippies used to say, you know, let your natural oils uh, lubricate your hair and it'll be healthier. It's starting to look like there's some fact to that. So when you go to wash your hair and if, you're, if your hair is already damaged and you want to lessen the damage in the future. Wash it only when you need to. May it not every day though. And just wash it at the roots with your shampoo that's not non-sudsing shampoo. There are even people that are going th through a phase called no poo, which means no shampoo at all. And uh, I'm not one of them, but um, they believe that you can just use bicarbonate of soda and vinegar and water to rinse out your hair. And at first your hair is going to go, eek, what are we doing to me? You know, and it's going to, it's not going to look great. But after a while, it'll get used to that and start looking healthier. Anyway, uh, when you go to uh, rinse your hair, make sure you get all the suds, I mean soap or shampoo I should say out because it dries it out even more if we if we forget to rinse really really well and then we go to get our towel and we don't want to just rub 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 our towel over like when you're drying off your body after a shower or shampoo or shampoo so let's just be easier on our hair and pat pat dry with our hands and let the, or just wrap it around the towel around and pat it and let it sit for a while and then you can either dry it naturally with the air or if you are one that wants to style it use a uh, heat protectant for before you use any drying agent like a, a dryer of course your conditioning you should always condition your hair before you do any uh, uh, drying on your hair or styling. Uh, you might even just try uh, moosing your hair with mousse, something like that that's not going to hurt your hair and styling it with that. Um, so there's a lot of options that, that we can look at. And also I, I am one to believe that um, the coloring, the cheaper it is to buy the color agent for your hair, the more harmful the ingredients are to your hair, and try to avoid bleach altogether. And a leave-in conditioner is a good idea if you can get that after you've done your hair. Uh, just a daily spray on or leave-in conditioner is a good thing to keep uh, as a daily practice. And when you go to get haircuts, I know that um, some people just want a half an inch cut off on the ends. But a lot of times it's better to just go a little higher, like an inch to an inch and a half above where the split ends are. Protect your hair. When your hair is wet, you want to, a lot of times you just want to start brushing it and combing it. If you're going to use a comb, use a wide tooth comb. And, uh, it's better really not to do too much brushing because your hair can fall out especially it could get tangled if it's the type of hair that gets tangly easy what i do is i buy a, a wet dry brush uh, i know i know you know since i have a license i know how to get those and they're not that expensive uh, but you might be able to go to a place like sally's 
and uh, ask them if they carry wet dry brushes what they do is they have a cushion uh, pad attached to the bristles and that somehow protects your hair from getting um, pulled on and so when you go to color your hair instead of coloring each time the whole head of hair just color the new growth that should help and then um, Here's a list that people have mentioned online that they find to be good products that are not expensive. I, I mean, I haven't investigated the ingredients on all these, but this is just something that I got. One is Sun Silk. Another one is called Nexus Pro Mend. Another one, Pro Natural Hair Care. Bio Silk. Uh, you're supposed to avoid a product called Sodium Laurel Sulfate. And that is a, a carcinogen, so it's a cancer-causing agent. Excuse me for my allergies. It's a foaming agent, too. It can penetrate into the skin as well. Also, you want to avoid anything with preservatives, uh, modifiers, colorants, fragrances, and the following. M E A T E A, like the word T, and these stand for a long chain of 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 agents. D E A N I T. And I wanted to mention that as far as coloring hair, if you're going to do um, uh, an act, use an activator. It's best to use a low volume activator, meaning something that's like 20 is a 6% peroxide is 20, not 30. If you go up too high in the number, then it's going to have more of the peroxide and it's going to be more harshness on your hair. And try to time everything so you don't leave anything in too long. You want to, you don't want to forget about it or, um, Dry, do more damage to your hair than is necessary for coloring your hair. So uh, neurological damage has been shown with MIT. Uh, this is from um, Natural News. And they said also with Suave, with Head and Shoulders, with Clairol, and Pantene Hair Conditioning. So I found out some Things, and I hope these tips help you and that give you a little insight into what to do and how to handle your and manage your split ends and hair care. And for those of us that color, uh, it's really important to follow some of these suggestions to minimize the damage. Good luck in that. And I thank you very much. This is Nicole Lee. Bye bye. Hello, it's Nicole Lee with Health, Beauty, and More with another beauty tip for you. And I hope this will help you if you have some fine lines around your nasal labial folds or smile lines. They aren't really, really deep, but you can use some little touch up, a little firming. Now, here's an exercise I invented, and it feels like it's getting a lot of those muscles in that area. And I think you'll find it funny looking, but easy. You could do it in your car, you could probably do it while you're watching TV, whatever you're doing you could do it almost anywhere I just don't let people see what you're doing they might think you're weird here we go uh, you take your lips and make them look like a duck mouth and then try to smile like this Like you're saying, my lips are sealed. I'm not going to say anything. And when you hold it, you'll start to feel a burn after a while. And this is something you do repeatedly until you feel that your muscles are fatigued or it hurts almost. Just let's try that again. Make them the duck lips. And now try to smile.
and relax. That was pointing to the areas where I could feel the muscles working in my face. I'll do it one more time. Make a duck, duck lips. And smile. There. Okay, I hope this beauty tip helped you. Give it a try. I think you'll be very surprised and happy that it's helping you tone up, tone up your face. Nicole Lee with Health, Beauty, and More. Bye now. Hi, this is Nicole Lee with Health, Beauty, and More with some tips and some facts for you um, regarding health. And how to take care of ourselves with natural ways like herbs and how we eat. Um, I found this list of different herbs and some of the attributes they have and as far as illnesses go, if you are um, interested, I'm going to go through it anyway, um, but if you don't want to hear about this part then that's I understand. But when we have different issues that go, come from A to Z, you know, during our lifetime, we can depend on some of these herbal products that are natural, and you can find them at most health food stores, and even some of your pharmacies carry this. Uh, the first one in the A group, I'll go through that first, and that's acne. They have um, tea tree oil or calendula or aloe for a remedy, a natural remedy. Also uh, for in the A's, alcoholism. They listed prim, evening primrose, which I believe also helps with relaxation. And something called kudzu, kudzu, which is like a fungus that grows on trees in the south, in the southern area states of the United States. I've seen it, especially in Georgia. Um, for allergies, they have chamomile. Uh, for anyone with Alzheimer's disease, they list rosemary and ginkgo, ginkgo or ginkgo biloba. Um, chest pain is also called angina. Um, they list hawthorn, garlic, willow, and green tea. Green tea has been known to help with a lot of cures and uh, a lot of it's, it, it's a remedy for a lot of things, but I'll, I do know this, that it does have caffeine in it. And if I find it without caffeine, I'll probably buy some. For anxiety and stress, they listed hops, kava, passion flower, valerian, chamomile, and lavender. For arteriosclerosis, they list garlic. For arthritis, they list capsicum, ginger, turmeric, willow, cat's claw, and devil's claw. For the condition of asthma, they list coffee, ephedra, or tea. They also list um, top, the topical tea tree oil to use that for athlete's foot. But I've also heard about using Vicks Vaporobe for athlete's foot. Uh, it supposedly helps if you do it daily and it doesn't take long before you see a significant difference. For um, attention deficit order, they listed evening primrose oil. For bad breath, they listed parsley. Um, also, chlorophyll is a good one, too. But par the chlor chlorophyll can cause heartburn, so I would take it with in stride and, and maybe dilute it with something like baking soda or some fruit juice. Uh, for boils, they list tea tree oil, topical garlic, echinacea, Another one that's a very long word, Eleutherococcus, ginseng, and rhodiola. For bronchitis, they list echinacea and pelargonium. For burns, aloe, or another word, aloe vera, from the aloe vera tree plant. 
And for cancer, they have quite a few items in here. They have bilberry, blackberry, cocoa, dark chocolate. Mm. That's that's means yeah, I better eat some of that. Mm. Nature Valley nut crisp and a dark chocolate almond dark chocolate. It's so delicious, and I know. So grab that. I must be hungry. Okay, after that one, for cancer, they also list the green tea, the garlic, the ginseng, something called maitake mushroom, maitake mushroom, which I don't think I've seen that in the grocery store, but it exists. They list pomegranate, raspberry, and the reishi mushrooms. They, they said for canker sores to use golden seal, for colds, echinacea, Andrography, ginseng, coffee, licorice roots, also good for a sore throat. For, um, or you can use tea, uh, nasal and chest congestion, it helps out. For congestive heart failure, they list hawthorn. For constipation, they list apples, psyllium seed, and senna. But I know that milk of magnesia is very good. Anything with magnesium in it is good for constipation. For coughing, they use they list a eucalyptus, but eucalyptus oil is, opens up the passageways, and it's just it's like that wasabi green, um, you know, what wasabi is that stuff that you get with sushi rolls, but it doesn't burn light as much. It just opens everything up so that you can breathe and um, feel clear. You know, it clears the passageways. All right. For depression, I have down here St. John's wort. Um, uh, but they didn't add Sam E, but I know that's natural. For diabetes type 2, they list garlic, uh, navy, pinto, or black beans, cinnamon, and eleutherococcus, flaxseed, and green tea. For, for diabetic ulcers, they list comfrey. For diarrhea, they list bilberry and raspberry. For diverticulitis, they list peppermint. I noticed peppermint is also great for restless leg syndrome. If you've ever had that or know someone with it, have them rub their feet and legs with the peppermint essential oil and see if that works. For dizziness, I have down here ginger and ginkgo. For earaches, I have echinacea. For eczema, chamomile, topical barrage seed oil, and evening primrose oil. For fatigue, I have down dark chocolate. Oh, see, there is another reason to eat this stuff. If you're tired, uh, coffee, eleutherococcus, ginseng, rhodiola, and tea for flu, echinacea, elderberry syrup. Uh, for gas, they list dill and fennel. For a giardia, which is a stomach problem, um, I think it's a parasite of some sort, they list golden seal. For gingivitis, which is gum disease, they list green tea and golden seal. For hay fever, they list butterbur and stinging nettle. For herpes, they list lemon balm, uh, comfrey, echinacea, garlic, and ginseng. For high blood pressure, they list garlic, beans, dark chocolate, again, there we go, cocoa, <laughs> and hawthorn. For high, high blood sugar, fenugreek, fenugreek, that's how you pronounce it, I believe. For high cholesterol, they list apples, cinnamon, cinnamon is good on apples. Cocoa, dark chocolate, there we go again, high cholesterol, evening primrose oil, I must eat more chocolate, dark chocolate. Flaxseed, soy foods, and green tea for hot flashes, red clover, soy, black cohosh. For impotence, talked about men, I believe, yohimbe, which is made from the yam, I believe. For indigestion, we have chamomile, ginger, and peppermint. For infections, we have topical tea tree oil, Astragalus, um, or I'm not sure if it's pronounced astragalus, echinacea, eleutherococcus, garlic, and ginseng, and rhodiola. And then the list goes on for insomnia, kava, primrose, evening primrose, hops, lemon balm, valerian, irregular heartbeat, we have hawthorn listed. Um, 
I believe if you rub your chest with uh, Vicks Vapor Rub, that helps with your regular heartbeat too. Maybe it's the men the camphor or the mentholyptus eucalyptus aspect of it, but it does seem to help. For irregularity, they have senna and psyllium seeds. For irritable, irritable bowel syndrome, chamomile peppermint, lower back pain, thymol, carvacrol, and white willow bark for menstrual cramps. We have kava, raspberry, chaseberry for migraines. We have feverfew and butterbur. For motion, morning sickness, ginger. For muscle pain, they have capsicum and winter green. I tried capsicum years ago. I don't know how people can um, stand the, the the pain of that is worse than the, the muscle pain itself. Uh, nausea, they said ginger. Premenstrual syndrome, they said chaste berry and evening primrose. Ringing in the ears, they list ginkgo. And seasonal affective disorder, they list St. John's wort. For shingles, they list capsicum. For sore throat, licorice, marshmallow, or moline. For a stuffed nose, echinacea. For a tonsillitis, golden seal, astragalus, and echinacea. For a toothache, they list willow and clove oil. For ulcers, they list aloe and licorice. And for varicose veins, they list bilberry, horse, and chestnut. Um, they didn't put one down here. For people that lose their hair, alopecia, horsetail, that's what I would say, would be the, the one I would go for. For yeast infections, they list eat garlic, uh, take golden seal, and something called podarco. And then I can give you that list if you if you want it, it, it for your own use, but uh, that's a long one. But I'd be glad to send anybody that list if that's something you want. Fruits and vegetables that contain uh, essential vitamins, minerals, and fiber, they can help protect you from chronic disease. Because people that don't eat a lot of fruits and vegetables have a lot more problems and risk, uh, a higher risk of chronic illnesses like stroke and, and other cardiovascular diseases and even cancer. So most of our nutrients should come from food. Um, the foods that contain, like the fruits and vegetables that I was talking about, they contain all the vitamins, minerals, and supplements that are natural and they're naturally occurring and they protect you from so many different things, so many different diseases. And uh, if you look at the Japanese and their diet, they seem to have the longest lifespan in the world, lowest incidence of obesity, heart disease, and diabetes. If you look at the Mediterranean diet, it's also extremely healthful. And it usually um, includes things that are homemade. Italian food is one example, um, like lentils and garbanzo beans to, and balsamic vinegar. Uh, not overeating, of course, is a good thing to remember because we tend to eat our, our largest meal at, at, in America. We end up eating too much at, in late in the day, our last meal. And I think it's the other way around for these countries that have a higher, uh, a lower risk of illness and a higher uh, uh, lifespan, healthier quality life. They eat their largest meal of the day as lunch in Italy, um, not dinner. They also have a big feast on Sundays and they take walks once in a while with their families. And one cardiologist really recommends that his clients go eat a uh, Mediterranean diet. His name is Richard Collins. He said that their diet is so rich in vegetables and fruits and whole grains and lean meats and poultry and a lot of omega-3. That's something that naturally occurs in fish, rich fish. A recent study in China found that women that eat mushrooms three times a week they have a 50% reduction in the incidence of breast cancer. They also drink a lot of green tea in China three times a week, and that lowers their risk of developing breast cancer as well. That's really stunning and uh, um, an enormous difference. Um, certain herbs, thyme, rosemary, oregano, basil, mint, and so on, the cancer rates are much lower when and, and the cancer is not as aggressive if people are utilizing these these um, spices. 
Here's a home remedy for fever blisters. You apply petroleum jelly to the skin or cold compresses on the affected area. And also avoid eating nuts and chocolate. Well, I know that's, chocolate isn't going to help you if you have a fever blister because I believe um, there is protein in there that antagonizes the, the virus that causes the cold sores and chocolate is, and nuts are no-nos for that. So um, if you're having a breakout and a, you don't, you, you don't, you kind of want to have to, that and caffeine and alcohol are probably no-nos for anyone that has um, canker sores. Home remedies for common fever are drinking tea made from saffron, eating oranges, they give you also instant energy and vitamin C help you fight off infections. Uh, also a glass of milk can help. A home remedy for a sore throat, let me give you that. It's a mixture of Listerine mouthwash with hydrogen peroxide. You pour a little of each into a cup, equal parts gargle. And eat three to four marshmallows to soothe a sore throat. And that's something children like because of all that sugar and corn syrup that they make them with. This, the gelatin in the marshmallows is what soothes the sore throat. They say drink hot water, lemon juice, and honey mixed together. I've heard that about honey, especially if it's locally grown uh, organic honey. That that not only does it do that, but it assists uh, when you've got allergies. And if you're prone to having seasonal allergies, try the, the basic honey. and You put on your breakfast toast or whatever you want to sweeten. With. And um, a home remedy for heartburn here. Just take a teaspoon of baking soda in an 8 ounce um, cup of water. And drink that. It's a natural antacid. You can also use it to brush your teeth with and it makes them lighter. I like mine. Kind of white. Bananas act as a natural antacid in the body. And you can eat either fresh or dried bananas. Fresh ginger, if you can swing eating it. It's just a little hard on the some people's digestive system. It's one of the oldest remedies for heartburn, but for me, I think it would give me heartburn. It can be added to food when it's cooked, eaten raw, or consumed as ginger tea. Okay, let me give you a couple of silly ones here. For, this is so funny. Another remedy for warts. Use duct tape to, renew, to remove your warts. If you're really strong enough to do that, and it's like waxing to me. Um, cure your nail fungus with vapor rub. Soothe your eczema by using oatmeal. I've heard that's also something that you can use on insect bites, like oatmeal. I've heard of oatmeal baths uh, for people that have um, problems with uh, hemorrhoids. You know, it, it soothes that area. Curing bad breath by eating yogurt. Well, yogurt has um, lactobacillus, and those are the good bacteria that we need to replace uh, in our body that uh, maybe we don't have enough of those, and it maybe has something to do with the bad breath. And then lastly is eating olives. That supposedly helps with motion sickness. I'm not sure which, whether they're talking about green or black, but... Anyway, I hope these things helped you, and uh, I hope you got something out of it. And let me know if you want any of this information sent to you. I'll be more than happy. Have a great day. Do whatever your, your heart desires, and just enjoy life. Namaste. Nicole Lee with Health, Beauty, and More. Hello. How are you out there? I'm Nicole Lee and I'm here to give you a health report. Um, I want to be uh, clear on the problem that we're having in our atmosphere which includes greenhouse gases. And I don't know if you've heard of that before, but greenhouse gases are toxic to the environment and for humans. Um, it's been on the rise due to a number of factors. Actually, um, it's part of the industrial processes. It's it's part of the emissions that are created through that, and humans are responsible for. Some of those emissions include nitrous oxide and 
another really bad one was methane, which you've probably heard a little bit about. Uh, and of course, the term global warming. Um, what you get in a greenhouse gas effect is trapped heat. Um, a lot of it can be just from driving our cars. Uh, it can be from coal-fired plants. It also can be a result of using natural gases. And then you, what happens is there's a release of carbon dioxide and other heat trapping elements into the atmosphere. Um, the carbon dioxide has increased by 31% over the last 150 years. And methane has increased even higher. And that's very bad for um, all living organisms. But the good news is that we can do something about our health and counteracting and absor absorbing some of these uh, emissions, these toxic emissions through what I would explain is by ingesting activated charcoal. But it's, if you do this, you don't want to do it too much because then that's not good and you need to take some breaks, periods of time where you're not absorbing the charcoal. Um, you can purchase activated charcoal at a lot of places. Um, places like Puritan's Pride have a very good deal right now. You can look online and find whatever place you want. You can either get it in the powdered form or in capsules. I think it's easier to take them in a capsules. You can also uh, use, use them for other things other than just um, absorbing the toxins in your system, but I'll go over that later. Uh, Carbon, activated form of carbon, is actually alkaline and highly electric. It binds to toxins and eliminates them from our intestines. So they do come out of our system naturally. This is an amazing, amazingly inexpensive item to purchase. And a lot of people weren't aware of all the uses of, of uh, charcoal, but they did give it to the military during, uh, I think it was World War I. Um, in a lot of ambulances, the paramedics, seem, they always carry charcoal, activated charcoal, on, on their uh, transportation vehicles as well. So it's been used for a lot of years and has uh, it's one of those secrets people don't hear much about it, but it's got a lot of benefits. Um, you know, you know what, I, being in the beauty field has, it, it sparked an interest in me also when I read that you can actually make a facial mask with um, removing the, the charcoal and adding it with uh, like honey. You make a paste with it. You might have to add a little bit of warm water as well. And you make a paste like um, in a bowl so that it, it can be applied either on your face as a mask or another thing is you can brush your teeth with it. And that is actually a good way to clean the, 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 uh, the acid and the plaque on your teeth. So you open the capsules, um, put them in a warm, little bit of warm water, honey, make it very pasty before you do that. But you wanna avoid it getting into your eyes, your mouth and your nose. This is just an awesome subject, and I'm glad I came came across this because I think people should be aware about the heavy metals and how we can detox by using carbon and activated car, uh, charcoal. I mean, um, you know, uh, uh, it has so many numerous um, effects for our health. It can be treated. You can treat your uh, if you have a poisonous snake bite or an insect bite with the with the activated charcoal, you can treat poisonings, you can treat dysentery, upset stomach, you can use it as a deodorizer, even in your refrigerator. Um, cancer patients with anemia have used activated charcoal. It helps purify and eliminate toxins from the liver, the kidneys, and purifies the blood in transfusions. Um, let's see. If you have any questions about this, I would greatly appreciate you uh,
putting it into the comments area of my um, page here. I did want to add one more thing though. When a person has any issue with their stomach, like through they can't, can't tolerate uh, certain carbs or get gas and upset stomach, if you just take a, two to three of these capsules in glass, you know, just you can either just pop in your mouth and then swallow them with your meal or just before your meal, you will be amazed at how much better you feel and how you won't have that bloating and gas. And that's the, how I happen to come into this is because that's what I thought people were doing with the ch activated charcoal. But it's amazing how much more comfortable it is and how much better you're going to feel. And I just wanted to pass this on. This information is invaluable and I hope that everybody that has a use for these will always keep it on board in their presence, like their, wherever they live, their residence. Keep that, keep um, some other ones you need to keep are like vinegar, white vinegar is good. Another thing is uh, sodium bicarbonate. That's a good to always have around your kitchen in case of a fire. But I was just amazed and um, you know, I just couldn't believe all the benefits that activated charcoal has. So I hope this gives you some reason to go out and get some for yourself. Stock up on it. Try the try it and see what you say, what you think. And give me back your um, your replies and questions. And I've got a lot of knowledge in the health field. I'm always researching things. And I just want to pay it forward. Namaste to everybody. Have a really, really terrific day. Nicole Lee here again for some very easy beauty tips. I'm a licensed esthetician and I'm going to show you one way that you can rejuvenate your skin to make it healthier and more youthful looking. You'll get quite a rejuvenation effect if you follow these tips. What you first need to do is make sure you wash your face with um, your favorite cleansing cream and then rinse it off with a warm towel. Warm is better than cold because it won't close the pores. You want the pores to stay open so that it'll receive whatever you're going to be using for the treatment we're going to show you. Um, and I suggest that you, if you don't have one of these or something similar, that you apply that to keep it, keep it um, free of getting all over your hair. You want to put it on like you would um, if you were going to get a facial, for example. And then your, if your face is clean, you prepare just your, your uh, face with the uh, headband to protect your hair. And you'll probably need something um, along the lines of this will work great for what the main tool. And this is just like a, a stiff it or spatula. And it's probably something similar to a popsicle stick although it's, I got it at a beauty supply store. Um, next, tea tree oil. You can get that at most places. Health food stores have them, uh, even uh, your, your local pharmacy or drugstore. And almond oil. Again, for it's, a, uh, it's like an essential oil, and it's pure, natural. You can get it at most health food stores, uh, even some pharmacies or our drug stores may carry a form. This one is called Now. Uh, let's see, the brand name is N-O-W Solutions Almond Oil, 100% pure moisturizing oil. The tea tree oil is 21st century, 100% pure tea tree oil. It's a natural antiseptic as well as an oil, and it has a lot of health benefits. Do not get it near your eyes. Be careful not to get it in your uh, mouth because it can sting. It's pretty strong when it's at 100%. It's, not, it's concentrated. 
What you want to do is wash your hands, make sure they're nice and clean, and then apply your tea tree oil all around your face. Being careful to not get it too close to your eyes. You can put it around your neck and chin. Unless you're really sensitive. Some people, their necks are very sensitive. So you might want to test it. Test it on a little spot first before you apply the treatment to see how your skin responds. Because there are people that are sensitive and allergic to all kinds of things, even natural products. And then the almond oil, you do the same thing. Plug that on your face. I use the um, mainly these two fingers to apply my products. While you're at it, it's nice to give yourself a very soothing massage. If you come up through here, it takes away a lot of the tension. You're doing yourself a facial in a way when you're massaging these areas, especially around the temple area. These fingers, one or two fingers, the ring finger, the middle finger. Or what I'm using for massaging that area around the temple. And then going up through here, it helps drain the lymph out of the areas like collecting in, in the area under the eyes to be very gentle around the eyes, under the eyes. Of course, you're going down the nose too around the obicularis oris muscle. This is a circle around the lips. There's a lot of muscles around the face. All of these muscles have a function. We forget to use them a lot of times and they get loose. And like muscles in your body, you need to exercise even your face muscles. Tone, it helps tone them so they have a more youthful look and appearance. Okay. Mm, it feels wonderful. I don't really want to stop here. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, boy. Okay. Now that the lovely, wonderful feeling of massage made me feel much looser and less tension in my head and there's so many muscles up in your scalp that if you really want to get rid of tension give yourself a nice oil massage with your of, of your scalp don't worry about it you know being that it's oil because you can always wash it out but what it does is it helps See, these muscles, like the frontalis muscles, they go all the way back and over the back of the head. So there are, everything is attached. There's deeper layers as well, muscles, superficial and um, external muscles upon over the layers of dermal layer of cells. Okay, so this little stick is the main tool we're going to be using. You can start anywhere. I'm going to start here. And what I'm doing is just um, scraping against the skin. And it doesn't hurt, but you want to use a firmness, enough of a firmness to create some redness. Because the redness means that you're getting blood circulation. And you're getting when you get more blood circulating, you're going to have those cells working to help increase the collagen and elasticity for a more rejuvenating look. So take your time, do what you can tolerate, just make sure you're not hurting yourself, but do find out what feels tolerable to you 
And the areas that I would focus on are wherever you feel you have the most um, wrinkles. If, if you have any areas that are of concern that might be cancerous, then I would ask your doctor first before doing any of these treatments. Because you don't want to stimulate cell, you know, the wrong kind of cells to multiply. You want to stimulate the good cells to work, do their magic. You can do a little bit about the neck. I would the first time, you know, don't do too much, don't do too, be too rough on your neck because the neck area is definitely sensitive. And some people avoid it completely because they don't want to do that area. But that's all up to you. But your face should get kind of ruddy when you're doing this, if you do it right. And that redness is good. It's called erythema effect. It's a normal thing. What you would do is um, do this for about five minutes, maybe. Unless it's getting too rough for you, then stop and allow your face to feel flushed like if you got embarrassed. That red tone is a good sign and you mostly the antiseptic tea tree oil is what's causing the sting the stinginess which is what you you want some of that to help um, bring out that glow and when you're done when you'll have a luminous face the next day you might get compliments and people might ask you what do you did what'd you do differently but that's your secret right so go ahead and do what I'm doing to your tolerance level for about five minutes as I said and then I would just let it sit for a few minutes. And after that, take a nice cold washcloth, like I have here, and dab your face all over. And your neck, if you did, if you did your neck. Oh, that's great. That cold, the colder rag feels really wonderful after doing this procedure. Oh, it's just great. There's so much you can do to save money, you know. You don't have to pay a esthetician or a dermatologist. If you watch my channel, I'll I'll show you a lot of tips. I'm always available if you have questions, and I'd love you to um, give me your response and reply and and like and um, any comments and questions you might have. I'll get back to you, and I want to present as much information as I can out there to the public because it's paying it forward. Anyway, that after you've done all this, you're your normal do you put your normal moisturizer on and you're ready to do whatever if you're if it's at night you do whatever if you want to put makeup on your skin ready for it but I like to do this at night because then when I go to sleep at night I feel like my face has a chance to, to do its magic and work anyway thank you for watching and I'll be looking forward to hearing what you, what you guys have to say bye bye Hi, this is Nicole. I want to give you guys out there some help if you have dry eyes, uh, especially if it happens that you have uh, blocked ducts, like for example in um, in the eyes. There's the tear ducts and the uh, oil glands under the eyelids. They're actually actually the the medical name for that is melbomian glands. Um, 
The first thing you do to help yourself treat this condition, which is very unpleasant, it can create all kinds of um, side effects like irritation to the eyes, conjunctivitis, uh, excess tearing, which is what I've had to live with for quite some time, especially in one eye. Um, you'll know if you have it, your optometrist will be the one to tell you. Uh, they don't always give you advice on how to treat it though, but some doctors do treat these uh, melbomian gland blocks through extractions. But I'm just going to give you an at-home treatment gu guideline on what you can do to start um, taking care of your dry eyes. What you would do is, is take a warm cloth, um, is, uh, tolerate it as warm as you can, that when you close your eyes you're going to put them on your eyes, each eye, for one minute or so to start off. But don't, don't make it too hot a temperature. I like to use the microwave to get a wet towel, a small washcloth is what I use and I like to put it in there and if it's really hot when you take it out of the microwave don't put it directly on your face yet shake it out take it by the hands and just shake it out it'll air it out to cool off the temperature much quicker so the warm compresses are to be applied to, cle to clear the debris which creates at the crust on the lid margin and you'll do that and then what I like to do is follow that up after a minute by massaging the eyelids um, and do that for a couple of minutes do uh, each eye you, know, you might have to reheat the cloth because it will cool off really quickly but I would do that every day or night after you uh, get ready for bed but um, you can also use a stocking filled with uncooked dry rice and heat that in the microwave. And that'll last a lot longer. That way you won't have to jump up and keep heating, reheating and reheating your wet towel. So that's one thing you can do to hold the heat in. It's also very soothing and comforting at any rate. So all this is going to make you feel better. Anyway, the uh, eye massage for the malbomian gland dysfunction are blocked. They're blocked is what happens. We don't know why some people get them, but it could be from using makeup that you're allergic to. It could be all kinds of reasons for it. Uh, be careful when you do use makeup about uh, what you're using on your eyes because they're sensitive and can develop irritations, especially with mascaras, anything that comes in contact with the, uh, near the eye, like mascara is especially uh, troublesome for a lot of people if they don't change them out every couple of months, or any of the eyeshadows that have uh, a frosted look to them may have pieces of that metallic in there. There's some sort of metal that maybe you're allergic to or sensitive to. It's not at all uncommon to have sensitivities to that. So what I would do after that is um, gently close your eyelids, put one index finger on the outer corner of the eyelid, and then pull the eyelid towards your ear so the eyelids are stretched tautly. Then use the index finger of the other hand and apply direct pressure on the eyelid starting at the inner aspect of the eyelid near the base of the nose. Sweep across toward the outer eyelid using the gentle pressure. Just repeat this maneuver about four to five times on each eye. The goal is to apply gentle pressure, not heavy pressure for the eyelids. And then the third thing, um, lid scrubs. This is a little harder to, to do, but you can you can get used to it because we tend to blink when we get too close to the eyeball itself uh, with our fingers. So at the base of your of your lids are your eyelashes. And um, if you're going to use any kind of soap, be really careful and use something really mild, maybe like a, a baby shampoo 
on your fingertips and do not get it in the eye if you can avoid that that would be better but be careful about what you use so you don't use anything that's going to create conjunctivitis or eye inflammation requiring treatment from a doctor or you can dilute the um, eye shampoo the shampoo um, and use the scrubs you scrub the you scrub up the margin of your eyelash bases with your eyes closed for one minute following by a nice fresh warm cleansing or rinsing of that soap on your face and your eyes another way to do this is with a you could take a little cotton swab and try to get um, close to that area where I was talking about close to the um, margin near your nose and go across with a cotton swab you know just a little bit under the eyelashes and sweep it out um, another thing besides what we just talked about for the eyelid scrubs they do have some commercially pre-prepared pre-soaked uh, pads I think one of them is called Novartis but you can ask the pharmacist if you would prefer to use something that is already pre soaked and, and pay for it that way um, you know that it's safe for you but just tell them it's for lid scrubbing um, after you complete the lid scrubbing what I would suggest is either castor oil or if you have neomycin or neosporine um, that just put that on the eyelid where you scrubbed it on the margin on, not on the inside but you know, on, the, on the outside close to the um, base you know where the eyelashes are just to prevent from having any irritation and that's pretty much it and then the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, if you are using eye cosmetic products that have coal in it be careful um, it has not been approved by FDA as being something that's safe a lot of people are allergic to it and they're in a lot of eye pencils eyebrow pencils as well eyeliners and so you have to be careful about that because it is it has been known to cause allergic reactions due to some product that's in there that is is a harmful agent um, so just be careful about that um, I would maybe even just eliminate using anything that says coal eye liner or coal eye pencil just to be on the safe side because if it has nickel in it that's that's not good either because it can cause all kinds of house uh, all kinds of problems to your eyes when you touch your eyes it's another thing keep your hands well clean so that's all I have to say for you today and I hope that you have, if you have any questions you um, ask and reply and and I'm here to pay it forward namaste hi this is Nicole Lee with another very good tip for those people who suffer from restless leg syndrome that uncontrollable urge to shake your feet or your legs sometimes even your arms can be affected by this I've lived with it for many years and used to be on Lyrica and that controlled it but I had to keep taking more and more and more and that helped the drug companies of course but you don't, if you don't have to go that route and most people would rather be holistic and do something natural I finally came across something that really works better than ice packs ice packs packs work too but they get old try essential oil called peppermint peppermint oil it cost me only four dollars and ninety five cents at my local uh, health food store and I know if you give it a try and it works you're going to be very happy that's all I have to say for now good luck hope it works like it did for me and subscribe to me and I'll give you as much information as I can namaste and have a good day hi this is Nicole Lee I have some more beauty tips for you and I want to share with you what I do and I, I really do 
take care of my skin in a lot of ways and one of the things I do is moisturize. Um, I am a licensed esthetician so I've always been one to take care of my skin best I can and uh, maintain the best uh, quality of skin that I have and you don't know my age but uh, that's my my secret and um, let me go ahead and tell you about the moisturizers that I use after I wash my face in the morning and before I go to bed at night. Um, I mix two together is what I do because I like the ingredients that I get in Glow Naturals Essentials. The ingredients in Glow Naturals are hyaluronic acid and vitamin C. Um, those two together are my primary uh, the ingredients that I look for when I am first shopping, I first started shopping for the unique blend of the moisturizing that this property, these properties have. And then I'm going to show you the box of another moisturizer that I mix with the the Glow Naturals. If you can see it, it's called Adovia. And it's an intensive anti-wrinkle cream. And for my skin, uh, this works terrifically. I blend the two together and mix them on my, um, this part of my, my arm, my wrist generally. It keeps, if you keep them, if you want to keep them from getting contaminated, then use like a little a stick, like an orange stick or some popsicle stick or something clean that, Instead of using your bare fingers, it's better. And then you just mix it with that stick on here and then have your hands washed, of course, before you put them on your face so you don't create more problems with your skin. You want to minimize the uh, bacteria from accumulating on your skin. And then I rub it all over everywhere on my face, including my neck. And I just think it has great benefits. My skin feels so soft and uh, I have other tools that I use regularly that I will share with you and I'm going to do a reviews on. And I just can't wait to, to tell you how uh, I feel like my skin looks like I'm half my age and I've never had any facelifts. It's all natural. So uh, you take a look. What do you think? I hope you'll enjoy this uh, and you, this this video, and that you give me back some responses, and that you subscribe and ask me questions anytime. I'm I'm glad to share my knowledge. I have a lot of knowledge, especially in skincare and health and beauty and uh, physical therapy, because um, I worked in, as a licensed therapist assistant years ago, and I still have and use a lot of those techniques that I was um, taught during my years of schooling and um, I minored in biology so I have great interest in medical and um, I'm just glad to share my knowledge with you and pay it forward. Namaste. After only one week of using this very simple method, this is how white my teeth are looking and I'm very excited about it and it's so inexpensive you just have to do this okay whitening your teeth naturally is easier than ever if you could if you get a container like the one you see before you, you can find those at a lot of places that are often at Mexican restaurants and get a lid for it like I have that way you can keep it near your toothbrush in the bathroom. What I do is I take a natural toothpaste, no fluoride. I take one capsule of activated charcoal. You can buy it at almost any health store. You open up the capsule Mix it in the container with your toothpaste plus a teaspoon of baking soda. Stir it up till it's nice and pasty. 
kind of a grayish color, blackish color. Always keep a lid on it when you're not using it so it won't dry out. Brush your teeth, but be careful not to get it on your clothing because it, it stains. It's such an easy thing to do. It'll take about a week to two weeks and you'll see a noticeable difference. Good luck. Let me know what you think and subscribe. Namaste. This is Nicole Lee.